Hi there, and welcome to The Artist's Craft. I'm your host, Stacey Cochran, and we've got an excellent guest in studio today, Cynthia Barnett. Cynthia Barnett is the executive director of the North Carolina Writers Network. The North Carolina Writers Network serves writers at every stage of development through programs that offer opportunities for professional growth in skills and insight. The network builds audiences for literature, advocates the literary arts, and provides information and support services. The network's mission is to connect, promote, and lead the writing community from beginners to published professionals. So my first question for you, Cynthia, today is what exactly is the Writers Network in addition to all of that? What is the, the North Carolina Writers Network? Well, Stacy, um, it's a wonderful place, a kind of a, a place, a mental place, but we have a physical office as well, um, to come together as writers and to learn and share what we know. And so we like to think that anyone who's just beginning to scribble in a journal, uh, or anyone who's very serious about writing, maybe has quit his or her job, or someone who's already advanced and perhaps getting a publisher would feel welcome in the programs of the Writers Network. Now how many members do you have? We have nearly 1,500. Now that includes over 1,300 paying individual members, dues paying members, but it also includes a lot of uh, members that we like to have just because we need them, like libraries and MFA programs. Now, when did the North Carolina Writers Network begin and, and who founded it, who started it? Well, lots of people started it, and I think the fun thing is lots of people like to take credit for starting it, which is wonderful. The fact is it was a group of writers in 1985, or they probably had had discussions long before then. They realized the need for writers to get out of their garret, so to speak, mm -hmm. and to be together and to share what they know, become mentors, and get services. So I would say, uh, I don't even know how many, but a lot of them were poets. And uh, they began mostly in the center part of the state, mostly around the Chapel Hill, Hillsboro area, but there were many others. And that was, as I say, in 1985. Now, who can join the North Carolina Writers Network? Well, anyone. I'd love to say that kids as well, but right now that's not really feasible. So we have adult members, including college students, um, and anyone, as I say, who just is interested in the experience of writing. Is it primarily the North Carolina residents? Is it exclusive to North Carolina residents, or can folks from Virginia or South Carolina or Tennessee or elsewhere join as well? Absolutely. We have members from many states, and they do tend to be primarily southern states, but we have at least one or two in Wisconsin, some in California, and some in a foreign nation or two because people move or they mm. hear about us. Now, what does a member get for joining? Well, they get an array of services. The most visible thing would be our North Carolina network newsletter, mm -hmm. newspaper, and that is something that goes out to all members, uh, at least on a quarterly basis, but they also get certain member services on the website, they get discounts to all our programs, and they get a special critiquing and editing service, which is really one of the most, I think, useful things we do. Now, you guys have a big fall conference coming up uh, in, in a few weeks here. Tell us a little bit about what the fall conference is. Well, again, it's the opportunity for members and writers to convene, and that's really something we should stress because writers, again, are in a solitary craft. They're not like performers. And so it's for them to get together is important. But also it's a chance for them to hone their craft and increase their understanding of how to go about their writing, mostly the creative writing uh, genres we're talking about, the fiction, poetry, screenwriting, uh, memoir. These are the most popular among our, our writers at the moment. So when exactly is the fall conference? It's November. 16th through 18th, and the way to remember that is it's the weekend before Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. and it's in Winston-Salem at the Hawthorne Inn. So if somebody's watching the program tonight and they're interested in joining the North Carolina Writers Network and attending the fall conference, specifically, what do they need to do? Well, they should probably go first to our website, www.ncwriters.org. Okay. That would be the best. Okay, so that's www.ncwriters.org. Dot org. Yes, and that will be the place where they can see the description of all the courses, the bios of all of our faculty. They can learn about our keynote speaker, Jill McCorkle, the extra features like Manuscript Mart and all the things like that. They can also call us at the office. That's okay. Now, who all can actually attend the fall conference? 
Well, anybody. Again, let's get those scribblers out, the ones that are writing in their journal. They may be too embarrassed or shy to say they're writers. Well, it's time to come out of the closet and announce it. We'd like to have them, and we'd like to have the more experienced people, people like yourself who are into publishing and networking with other writers. Sure. Well, I'd love to attend. Well, I guess we can talk about that. Uh, well, talk a little bit about the purpose of the fall conference specifically. What is the purpose of this fall conference? Well, besides the things that I think are, are kind of automatically implied, taking classes, getting better, there's also that networking thing. After all, we're called the Writer's Network. And we're always amazed at how uh, much the writers appreciate this. They really need to get with each other and you know, give pep talks to each other. You know, writing groups, it's all about that, encouraging each other, giving feedback. So a lot of what happens at the fall conference is also happening in the halls and after hours and those wonderful conversations they have. Now, I've attended a few writers' conferences myself, and I know when I started out, it's very nerve-wracking for the very first time. Uh, but if you attend a few of these, you know, it gets more and more comfortable. So what are some strategies, what are some things that a first-time attendee can do to ensure that they have a great conference this fall? Well, first of all, I think picking up on that networking idea, you know, this is maybe the only chance they'll have during the year to really get to know other writers and benefit from their experience. So I would say, don't be shy. Don't hide out in your room. Meet with, with people. Go to the meals and go to the table topic meals that are assembled around certain subjects that might be of interest. Be sure to read ahead of time the books that maybe your teachers have written so that you get a good feel for who they are. And do sign up for all the additional features. For example, I mentioned Manuscript Mart. If you have a manuscript and you really are ready for good professional feedback, sign up for that. It's looked at ahead of time by a very prominent faculty member, and you get individual feedback. And one other thing that's new this year, Stacy, which I always get kind of chuckling about because I would love to be a fly on the wall. It's called speed pitching. And what that is, I think of it as speed dating for writers. Mm -hmm. You get just five minutes to give your elevator speech, so to speak, to the agent and editor who is in front of you, and that's it. You get to promote or propose what it is your writing is about as if this is and it may be the next step in your career, and then they give you feedback on the spot. So I'd say take advantage of everything and network, network, network. I've got to say, if you're doing the speed pitch, come prepared. That's <laughs> something you want to prepare for, I think, yes, ahead do. of time. Uh, what, uh, well, let's talk a little bit about the history of the fall conference. Is this something that's taken place for a number of years, or is this the first time that it's happened? Oh, it has taken place for many years. I think the first one was in 1996. I'm not positive, but I believe that was it. And I Again, the idea was that there were not enough opportunities for writers to get together and improve their craft. Well, in the meantime, the good news is I think maybe the network's done a good job. There are other opportunities out there. We have more book festivals now, literary festivals. We've got some good things in more uh, local and regional places. But the Fall Conference continues to be, I think, probably the biggest event of this kind. And we are supposed to be one of the biggest organizations of our kind in the nation. Well, that's really amazing. So. What are some of the ways that it's changed from 1996 to the present or in more recent years? How has it changed over the years? Well, in some ways, it probably didn't change a lot for many years for good reason. The needs are still the same to hone their craft, to get together, and to be inspired by a keynote speaker, for example. Jill McCorkle will be our speaker this year. She has ties, strong ties to North Carolina, as you know. But at any rate, I think things have changed a bit. And we've seen over the last couple of years many more people like yourself into blogs, into online opportunities to promote themselves, into self-publishing. And so we need to address those, first recognize them. And if there's any latent snobbery that these are not the old ways that writers got to be known, I think we need to get over them. So you'd see in our fall conference today many more classes dealing with those issues and those talents. Well, that's interesting to hear the executive director of the North Carolina Writing Network say that, you know, you guys are open to changing trends in publishing. I think that that's a great, you know, stance to, to take and to be open to new modes of publishing as well.